Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, ah, and welcome to episode 90 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Dude, another world download already? It seems like it's only been 10 episodes. Wait, that's exactly how long it's been. Hunting dragons in an age covered with snow is a lot harder than it looks at first glance. <laughs> Especially with them constantly trying to go to like the zero zero of the world and uh, making it like a, a progressively deeper and deeper hole. But actually, like... I can barely see, like, you can see him in the distance there, see him? You can barely make out the shape of the dragon. Um, your goal when killing these guys is to kill them before they get down to that world center, because you can't hit them with ranged weapons when they're down at the center of the world like that, uh, which is a big old nuisance. So if you can kill them before they start descending, that's kind of your goal. The good news is that that heart thing that there, that, that goes into your inventory no matter where you are in the world. As long as you're in the dimension that the heart exists in, it will zip into your inventory. See, look, they keep trying to get down there, and they are annoying about it, too. And then, obviously, of course, there's going to be water down here, because that's just my luck, um, which makes it even more annoying. And they keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. But I've been in this world for about, I don't know, 15 minutes now. I'm up to 24 hearts, which is not actually a terrible amount. Oh, look, they actually got down to bedrock, so that's nice. Good job, dragons. You're, um, I'm proud of you. I should get the, the staff from Draconic Evolution, because that thing is super powerful, melee weapon-wise. Um, nice. More dragons to die. So you can only, when they're here and they're doing this, this like, flapping at the center of the world thing, they can only be damaged by melee weapons. You can't shoot them. So, and the Ender is not, you know, the most powerful melee weapon in the game. A couple people have commented, like, Dyer, you've got, like, all the best stuff in the game, and you'll still have the Ender Sword. I know. I know. I could upgrade, get myself, you know. There he goes. He teleported away now. Totally starving. Could probably do something about that at some point. Oh, good, it stopped snowing. Well, that's nice been snowing the whole time I've been here, and that's been making this a challenge of a, of a time. Luckily, it's only five shots with my bow, so if you if you catch them up here, you're pretty much gonna kill them. Yoinks. Beautiful. Ow. And see, wherever you are, you're going to get those hearts teleported to you. You don't have to be anywhere near them. They just teleport right into your inventory, which is kind of nice. It means you can just haphazardly kill dragons, and you can rest assured that there's no going to collect the hearts that drop. And you can just, like, tap right-click when you've got this fully upgraded bow. It's amazing how fast it shoots. Just a quick tap. You can probably hear it clicking. Nice, and they just melt. So, farming hearts at the moment, that's what I'm working on. I kind of wanted you guys to see that that's what I was now doing at the moment. Um, we're going to head back to our base and see how the Wither Skeleton thing is going. I've let that run for a little bit off camera as well. I did manually repair the, the tool once or twice. Um, I was waiting until I got on camera to build the automatic repair mechanic that I want to do today. Uh, it shouldn't be too long to build. It should be a pretty straightforward process. Well, I mean, assuming that it goes as easily as I hope it will. Dragons die. Ha 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 ha. And then um, we'll see about maybe getting the... Uh, like I said last episode, I want to be in a position by the end of this episode to be able to get... Um, pretty much a um, the, the ability to craft and start working on the Draconic Power Gen. That, that's kind of my goal for next episode. I'm, yeah, that's where I'm at. So let's kill a few more dragons off camera here. We'll head back to the base, see if my sword needs to be repaired, and if it does, we can get working on that automation. And then we'll, um, uh, obviously I need more Draconium, Awakened Draconium, in order to get the Chaotic Tier stuff that I want. So, back in just a few minutes. I just earned the achievement Sniper Duel. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Kill a skeleton with an arrow from more than 50 meters. Nice. I was shooting randomly at dragons. I must have accidentally shot a skeleton. Sniper Duel for the win. 
All right, getting ready to head home. I decided I wanted a nice round number of 50 hearts. Um, so, yoinks. Waiting on that last one. And then we can pop home. That was fun. So, those hearts should make quite a good amount of awakened draconium. Let's ask for like 30 of these. That should be reasonable. Start. So, that's going to take a little while to craft, which is fine. Uh, let's get some food going on. We could probably even refill this charge. Um, I could let my, like it is filling from the wireless energy thingy that we've got, but it's just gonna take a while to fill up 200 million RF. So we'll do it in this guy. It takes a while to do it in this guy and he's doing it at a rapid speed. I might wanna upgrade my power transfer system at some point, might not be a terrible idea. We shall see. All right, uh, Sword, what's your situation? Because you've been running here for a while. You're getting close. Almost dead again. Once that thing dies out, uh, that should be good. Cool. So we'll let the um, the stuff run. How am I on skulls? Oh, yeah, 703. Nice. And stars? 73. Beautiful. Back in a minute. Good news, everyone. There's lots of wither skeletons in here because this dude's broken. Broken. Let's take him home and repair him. Uh, so what I'd like to do is pretty much what I'm thinking my plan for this will be is a dedicated ender chest channel. So if we made one of these doohickeys, one, two, and we made the color cyan, white, white. Yay! Uh, and what I'm gonna do is put one, let's see, so what do you have powering you? Good, you have that, that's good. Because it means that I can put this dude here and we can put an item conduit. We're gonna want a few of these and we're gonna want our Yetta wrench. Sweet. And we're probably going to want, because we want to filter on metadata and NBT, we're going to want an advanced filter. And that's the one that requires a Z-Logic controller, right? Probably, yes. Uh, so for that, we're going to want a head, two solarium, two silicon and redstone. Head, redstone. That should be cool. Slice and splice, do your thing. And then you do your thing, and we've got two of these. So on the down, we're gonna insert extract. We're gonna insert on brown. We're gonna extract on green, always active, with a filter that says you want the beheader sword, but you wanna match metadata and match NBT. Um, so that should be cool. I don't think we need to change this. I think because we're matching metadata and NBT, uh, we're good on that. So. Advanced item filter, that should be set. So you extract on green, you insert on brown, and then on the up, we want to insert on green, extract on brown, always active. We don't have to filter this because it shouldn't allow it to extract until it's fully repaired. So then over here, we're going to do something exceedingly similar. Um, let's dig back here. Okay, cool. That's, that's, that's perfect. Um, so what we want to do is say right behind this dude, we're going to have an ender chest. Okay, and then we're going to have this thing so that on the north direction, we're going to insert on brown, extract on green, always active, advanced item filter, broken sword, matching MBT and metadata, right? And then you're going to insert on brown. So on the south side, you're going to insert on there, extract on brown, always active. I think we're going to want another filter because we do want to filter what is allowed. Yeah, we should probably filter what's allowed to be extracted from the ender chest. So this one will only pull out a broken sword, but we want to make sure only the repaired sword gets put in there. So we're going to want another... Head, 
two, one redstone, two silicon, and two solarium. And uh, we're also going to want some paper. Have I still not like actually automated paper yet? I mean, I've automated uh, sugarcane, so that's cool. So we'll slice and splice this up once more. Do, 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 do. Beautiful. Advanced item filter, cool. And that's gonna be the repaired one. So we'll come over here and we'll specify what that's gonna look like. So when you're extracting from the chest, you need to filter. For now, I'm just gonna put oak wood planks in there, but we'll remove that in a minute, right? So watch what happens. When I put this in here, he should immediately be extracted and inserted into the repairing tool thingy over here. And this should start repairing. Nice. Durability. Now it's going to take a bit, but luckily, I have an acceleration wand. Fastest mode. Go. Go. And that's going to take a really long time to repair. I'm thinking we'll be back in a minute. 10% done. All right, so we're getting there. Uh, 1930, close, close, close. I kind of want to see the last tick over if I can. Super close. There we go, 2120. And now it should click over there. It should go back into this dude. Now it's gonna sit in the under chest because I don't have the whitelisting configured yet, but that's gonna be an easy thing to fix. We just take this dude out and we swap out on the extract filter, this thing. Matching metadata and NVT, you're fully repaired. This guy go back in here and then he lands in there. And then we have an awesome setup. Nice. So he's gonna stay in there until he's completely broken again, at which point um, he'll get extracted and repaired and put back in. So automated repairing, told you it wouldn't be that hard to set up. Pretty straightforward, uh, but also pretty awesome. Something I've been kind of meaning to get around to, just haven't had the chance yet or the need. Um, but now that we're using nether stars like crazy, it's probably a good idea to have some weather skeleton skulls. Also, I did get some soul sand last episode. I don't know if you noticed while I was crafting soul sand there. Got about 2,000 of them. Um, so in between episodes, I flew around the nether. Are you done fusion crafting? Nice. So we should have a healthy amount of awakened draconium. Let's convert that all into ingot form. And now if I want my chaotic cords, I've got two. Can I make two at a time? I can. Nice. Because we're going to want a total of seven more, I decided, right? So this should be over here doing its thing. And it's going to make awakened cores first. And then it'll make chaotic cores. So that's cool. Good times. All right, so we will be back in a minute um, after I've got all the necessary chaotic cores. It really didn't occur to me how much fusion crafting is needed. And I'm really glad I automated it. Because if you think about it, you need four awakened cores per chaotic core, which is a really large number, <laughs> um, as you can see. So uh, basically, yeah, it's, it's going to be a few minutes. So we're going to make sure that we're not recording while that's going, because that's only going to get two more. I need to get three more after that. It's going to be a little rough. Today I learned I'm actually running low on power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently using a million RF a tick to craft these chaotic core things. And like, I looked at it, like it didn't occur to me. I'm sure I noticed this before. It's 800 million RF per chaotic core. This is still only the second one. Um, so I currently do not have the energy to create any more. I'm currently sitting at 300 million RF. So... I need to make five more, no, four more, four more of these. I don't have the power. <laughs> I literally don't have the power. Um, so I may be making a gear shift here. Um, I may be switching things up. I literally don't have enough power to actually produce the, I do need three more. I need three more, three more, three more, three more, three more, three more right? Um, so I need like, just for the chaotic cores, not counting the awakened cores that I need, right? Um, 
So the chaotic cores themselves are 800 million RF. I need 9 million per awaken, which I need four, so that's like 36. So think about a billion RF per chaotic core start to finish. That's what I would estimate would be a rough cost, right? So we may actually not have the power right now to do that. Um, I could make myself a new one of these crystals, but I'm starting to think that that might not even be powerful enough um, to really make a dent in my energy needs. Um, so, <laughs> good times. With that in mind, I might actually switch gears and go down the rainbow generator route that I uh, talked about previously. Now, I still will make the draconic energy core thing for the generator because I really want to see how that thing works. And I will be honest, I haven't played with it much before. So, and I haven't even played with it in my test world yet. So, I don't really know how it all works, but I'd like to. So, with that in mind, um, I, I, I will absolutely be doing that. So, we will still go that route, but for now, I might want to start working towards uh, the rainbow generator. Does that sound cool? Um, so, let's do that. Um, if I may, which hopefully I may. So, I think first things first, let's talk about the rainbow gen and what's involved. So, in order for the rainbow generator to work, it only runs when all the other extra utility generators are currently running um, and it produces 25 million RF a tick, which is a huge amount of RF, like huge amount of RF, um, which is great. Uh, so we're going to totally do that um, right now-ish. So 25 million RF a tick, lots of power. Um, so to do that, we're going to need one of each generator. We're going to need two of each generator, though, because the crafting ingredients for the rainbow generator are one of each generator. So we need one of each generator to make the rainbow generator, and then we're going to need one of each generator to actually run the rainbow generator. In other words, we need two of each generator. Um, and there are uh, generators from extra utilities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, right? So 16 generators plus the rainbow will be 17. Let's figure out where that might want to live down here in the basement. I'm thinking like in this general area. So this is kind of like the center-ish. So like if this was the rainbow gen, right? We could have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. What if I just did like a four by four with the rainbow gen in front of it? How's that sound? Would that look cool? With like the rainbow gen there. Wouldn't that be neat? Right? So each of the generators like that, and then the rainbow gen in the front, and that thing will produce the power and we'll beam it all up into the big orb. I think that sounds like a good plan. Um, so I hate to be shifting gears in the middle of the episode because it means it's going to be difficult for me to actually get what I want to get today. Um, but we will get as far as we can into making this get going. Maybe even just the basics. So let me do this. Let me craft all the generators I need off camera. And if I run into any problems crafting, I will let you know. But I'm pretty sure I've got everything I need to make this stuff. Most generators need um, a furnace generator, I believe. So we'll get like a stack of those, right? So let's get 32 of these. And then furnace generators. Let's get a stack of you. Boom, boom. Furnace generators. So this should be about 32 of you. Nice. Close enough. 35. Um, and then we'll... We'll craft this off camera and we'll be right back. Cool. So just a quick status update. Got myself a couple of generators. Remember, magical wood um, requires four experience levels. It's a bookshelf and gold ingot. Um, wasn't able to craft it in the, uh, whatchamacallit thingy, in this window. But uh, I was able to craft it in here. So keep that in mind. Probably different crafting mechanics. Continuing along, we've got a couple furnace generators. Those are the ones we made a couple of. So let's grab those guys. Uh, continuing to craft. All right, I think that's pretty good. 
Uh, got that going. Just grabbed a bunch of slime that I need for my slimy generator. Remember that's uh, cactus in the mana infusion. How am I for cactus? Not bad, but not great. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, so all these generators will need to be automated at some point to start producing that huge amount of RF for tick that I wanna get. Uh, we'll figure that out somehow. Um, I'm gonna dip a door. So next thing we want is the rainbow gym. So we need the bottom half, check. And we need the top half, check. And then we obviously have a couple extra generators from other generators that we've used in the past. So that's cool, but now I should be able to make my rainbow gen and that is cool. Nice. So a little bit of crafting later. Where did you even come from? You're not allowed to spawn around here. How did you show up? Yeah, da, 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 da. All right, cool. You too, what is going on zombies? Beat it. You're like not supposed to be able to spawn. It's not even supposed to be allowed. Dude, more zombies, what is going on here? How are you guys spawning for real? I don't understand. You I understand spawning, zombies now. All right, so let's go into our basement. And let's start um, placing the rainbow generator stuff. So rainbow gen is going to go here. And then you guys are all going to go here, right? Um, so let's put away our draconic tablet just so that I can move this up. And then we can do four things at a time. Actually, you go away. You know what else can go away is you. And I don't really think it matters which of these go where. But if I decide at some point that it will be easier, then we'll get there. So potions. So we have to get each of these generators running. And each of them have obviously, you know, certain requirements to run. Nice. Beautiful, looking good, right? So we're familiar with some of these generators, obviously. Um, we're gonna basically wanna automate this so that each of these receives the required stuff. And, ooh, they have a redstone trigger. That's kinda cool. That's actually really cool. I think this is a new addition. This didn't exist before, did it? So I'm gonna make it so you need a redstone signal in order to run. That's actually super exciting. That's kind of going to make my life a little bit easier. So with a redstone signal required to run, that's cool. Now this guy right here, when you right click him, it'll tell you which generators are or are not running, which is actually pretty useful to know. Um, so we'll be able to see at a quick glance if, if this isn't working for whatever reason, we can right click it and it'll be like, oh, your pink generator is not running. Okay, cool. Um, so for the time being, the other thing I'm gonna wanna have to do is upgrade this dude to another tier of energy relay. Um, Let's real quick look at Draconic. I want to see what the top tier Draconic Energy Relay Crystal is requiring. I think I should be able to get that going. Um, so we're going to need one, two, three, four Wyvern Energy Cores, a Wyvern Core. And then four diamonds. And we're also going to want the relay crystal, the wyvern tier relay crystal, because I want the top tier of this if we can. So let's teach you what's involved here. So you're basically gonna be four of you, four of you, four diamonds, and the wyvern core. Cool. That's going to go in here. 
And then all we have to do is program this guy. So let's go through the inputs, right? Um, you already have one of these, which is good news. Um, the problem is when you have overlapping ones. Two, three, four. You need to insert that. And you're going to extract. I'm going to filter that thing in a minute. But now we need diamonds. So one two, three, four. So in theory, this should work. So it should get all the stuff it needs and then start populating the chest. Did I miss one? One of those, and then one, two, three, four. Which one is you? This guy. Oh, I see what happened. Uh, so let's put that there, and then that should work. Kinda, sorta, maybe, sorta, probably. I think so. Cool. Then we can get our Draconic Energy Relay Crystal, because we're going to need a really large amount of RF transferability um, to be able to handle the energy output. We need 25 million RF per tick. Um, so we'll see what happens. I just need to program the extract to run. Cool. So you whitelist that on the extract. So you're allowed to extract that dude and then... Pop that in there just to make the crafting think it was completed successfully, which technically it was. Sweet. So we can take these dudes. We're going to replace some stuff here now. Um, so you're going to actually be... I probably should have left that where it was, but eh, whatever. Is that about where it was? I'm going to bring it up one more, a couple more. So this guy is capable of storing 64 million RF in its buffer, which kind of translates to how much power it can it can manage. So you connect to here, right? And that's running again. And you now also connect to... So I'm going to craft this guy, and that gets me two of these. Now this guy's in output mode, so we're going to break him. We're going to make sure that you're in output mode, and then we're going to right-click you, and then boom, we've got an orange beam. Sweet. And then just to make sure that if I ever decide I want this thing running again, we'll connect him up as well. Nice. Pretty slick, huh? So this thing has a nice energy capacitor storage. That's going to be required. Um, and then we'll hook this dude up to it. He also has 32 links that he can do, so we can easily hook up to all these things. Now, all of these guys don't necessarily need that massive amount of power output. They could probably all have basics, except maybe the Nether Star Gen. I forget how much this guy... 4,000 RF a tick? I mean, that should be fine. That should be just fine. So what I'll probably want is... 16 of these. That's easy enough to make. Cool. And then we'll, and these will all be set to input. Input all around. All 
All right, let's just double check. I didn't miss any. Four, two, three, four input. One, two, balance. Three, four input. One, two, three, four input. And then obviously this guy as well. Input. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, let's get some of this. We're going to want more. That's cool. And then let's also make sure that we are bound to all these dudes so that when you're running, you can generate your power. Now, I'm not going to automate all of these just yet, but we will get there soonish. Cool. So you're all bowing into that thing. That's kind of neat looking. All right. So let's get, because you all need a redstone signal to run, we're going to kick this little thing off. There's going to be a lot of automation required to get this thing going. Cool. And then we'll get redstone cabling laid down. I might have to force you to connect to the up. That's annoying. Let me do this off camera then. All right, so they should all be good to go. Uh, what I'm gonna do then is, what direction is that? South, I believe, yes. So south will be a connection. And then I'm gonna get a lever. This is all temporary. But I'd like to kick this generator off before we wrap up the episode, if I may. I'm going to have to manually fill this stuff, though. So we'll be back in a minute. Once I get a few resources, I'm going to just put as much stuff as I can in all these things, and we'll go from there. So this is 20 seconds for ice and packed ice, 20 seconds for each snowball. So it doesn't matter how much generation we do. We want to basically make it last as long as humanly possible. So two minutes for TNT, 20 seconds for gunpowder. Cool. Uh, and you know how to make TNT, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to go in there, and you're not going to run, but if I flip this lever, you'll eat that TNT. Nice. Probably not the generator I should have tested with, but, you know. And you're, like, transferring power and all that good stuff? I assume as much? I don't see the beam connecting, but I have to assume that it's working. Maybe it's just such a small amount of RF gen that it's not showing the beam? Uh, I don't know. I would imagine it shows the beam, but it's not showing a beam. Eh, we'll figure it out. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to fill up all these generators, which is as much snow as I can. Oh, so don't forget you need um, halitosis. The halitosis generator is a thing, so I popped into my dimension there to get it. Cool. Good enough for now. So the good news is that I've got a decent amount of pink petals, so that'll definitely work. So for my potion generator, this one's going to be a little bit trickier to automate because potions don't stack, so I'm just going to do this for now. Uh, that should be good. Uh, next up we've got slimy, so we've got all these guys populated. That's cool. Uh, pink generator can just go a stack of these. These things only generate for half a second each, but that's okay. Uh, magma generator I filled up, overclock generator. I'm going to try and throw these guys in here. These guys... Overclock generators are weird, but they burn through stuff really fast. And then the Nether Star. Pop this dude in. So in theory, this should work. Now, the Nether Star gen might wind up hurting a little bit, but we'll see what happens. I do have full awakened armor though, so that should protect me from the from the withering effects of the Nether Star gen. Um, should we give this thing a try? Are we ready to activate it and see what happens? Go! <gasps> Rainbow gen activate! Nice! How much RF attack are we getting? Not quite as much as I would have hoped. What's not running? Potion generator. Oh, really? Oh, because I have to extract the glass bottle. See how fast that burns out? Overclock generator and potion generator. Those are my two biggest hassles. They are going to be really a nuisance. I really want them to run for a little bit longer. What's a long duration effect? So I put I put a speed potion in there and that got me a few seconds. There's definitely one that gets me a decent amount of time. 
Eight seems to be the longest so far, but I remember there one being, so there's a 16, there's a 32. That's a, that's a decent duration. Lingering Potion of Invisibility. I think any of the Lingering Potions will get me a decent duration. Lingering Potion of Slowness. Let's do that. Lingering Slowness. That is the one that lasts for a minute, for 32 seconds. So let me make that real quick. There's a lot of steps involved in making this potion, let me tell you guys. But we're almost there. Almost there. Making a few other things as well. The problem with the overclock generator is it burns through coal or whatever fuel source you're using so fast. It's like super insanely fast how quickly it burns through your fuel source, regardless of which fuel source you use. Um, so this should be the potion effect that I need, which is cool. Um, what I'm gonna do here, nice, 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 nice. Speed upgrades are almost done. Good. And then you can make your network, dude. Cool. I'm gonna make a stack upgrade. Oh, I need sugar. Nice. Export bus, network dude, okay, cool. So let's use, where's my overclocked? For now, this is gonna be temporary. This is super temporary, but a receiver with an export bus, with this, with coal, you're gonna be set to export stacks of coal at a time. And I know we're past the wrapping up point, but I really wanna see this rainbow gen kind of-ish working. Um, so you should be exporting your coal now. And I might even want a few speed upgrades just to keep that thing running. Um, and then you guys should be good to go. Lingering slowness potion for a minute each. So we pop these dudes in here, right? Um, and then you should be full of coal. Nice. All right, so if I activate this dude again, I'm gonna put the speed upgrades in here. We should see for at least about 30 seconds maybe a minute, this rainbow gen running. Nice, all I have to do is extract this dude. Beautiful. Now to check to make sure that you're receiving 20 million RF a tick. That ain't bad. Look, it just dropped all of a sudden. So what are you not running? Pink generator. Pink. We're gonna need a better source of pink. Twenty million is what we're getting here. That's crazy cool. We should be getting twenty-five million, um, which tells me that you're limiting a little bit. So can I turn you off for a sec? And everything should kind of settle down now. What I should really have is this guy directly feeding into the generator. Um, I could use with more pinks. Wow, we burned through a lot of coal. Um, any more pink? Flower petals, that'll at least last a little bit. You could go again in a minute. That's kind of cool. We really burn through our power quickly. But this thing, I, I have to imagine that he's the limiting factor here. If I had a separate one of these hooked And then your connection to the energy relay, we're gonna unlink that so that you're going directly to the IO crystal only. Let's see what happens when I activate this bad boy. So you're running. Get up there quickly. 30,000 RF. Input, wait, wait, wait. Output. Something's not running again. It's the pink generator. Pink generator, you're my problem. Let's get some pink dye, can we? Um, do we have any poppy? Not really. Mana infusion of daisy? Dandelion? I kind of want to just see this thing working. Uh, which one was it? Was it this dude? Yeah. Nice. 
this guy's the one doing it? Yeah. Definitely running late for the episode, but I assume nobody's complaining. Alright, you may now be complaining because of the loudness there. Sorry, my bad. Good enough for me for now. Pink generator gets you. The pink generator really we're gonna have to work on automating. Nice. 25 million RF a tick. Boom. That is cool. Look at that insanity. That is awesome. And we can just shut it down with the flip of a lever. Everything shuts off. And it even kind of stops in process, which is really kind of neat. It even, like, maintains... Like, it doesn't, like, stop eating fuel but burn out the rest of what it got. It stops processing, which is even cooler. That makes for some seriously, well, not seriously easy automation, but relatively easy automation. Um, so we just generated a lot of RF. We now have 19 billion RF, <laughs> which is a lot. <laughs> that is cool. All right, so let me wrap up for you guys. Um, it, so for the world download, you're going to have to manually fill most of these. Most of them are gonna last a while. Like most of these don't really need to be manually filled all that long because they last for a while. So like the snow you're gonna have to manually fill, but everything else, the disenchantment, you'll have to put another disenchantment in there, but that thing even lasts for like a decent amount of time. It's got another minute and a half um, out of the, well, it's only burned a minute out of six minutes. So the disenchantment lasts a while. Throw one in there, you're good. The potion generator is the one that you're really gonna have to focus on and the pink generator. All the others are pretty much gonna last a while. So if you wanna check out the, um, the rainbow generator, come down here, flip the lever, and it should be running. Cool? So that's for your world download today. I will do something better with that laser thing. Um, I'm guessing that the, the relay there wasn't able to handle the, the massive amount of RF per tick coming into it. Even though I hoped it would. Anyway, wrapping up point. Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Episode 90 world download coming at you. I will see you guys next time where we're going to hopefully now have the power to create more chaotics. All right, guys. Take it easy.